Welcome to Beyond Inventory Optimization, a webcast series that focuses on hot topics around supply chain excellence and inventory optimization. This series of short webcasts is sponsored by Legility, and you can view them at any time online at www.legility.com. So let's get started. I'm Chris Russell, an executive with Legility. I personally have had the privilege of working with smart supply chain professionals in many industries around the world, and I'm pleased to be able to bring you these special interviews with some interesting and compelling experts. Today we've got a great topic to talk about. It's the five core competencies of inventory optimization. And I'm going to fly solo today on this discussion, but we'll be following up with Dave Anderson, who used to run the supply chain practice at Accenture. David, we're live. How are you? I'm well, Chris. So stay tuned. Of course, there are more than five core competencies when it comes to any discipline in your supply chain. So in that sense, five is a subjective number. The real point I'd like you to take away from this topic is that inventory optimization has really matured as a discipline over the last 10 years. There is a set of best practices that is beginning to coalesce around inventory optimization as it matures, and this is what we're going to touch on today. As a maturing discipline, we see things that, frankly, we would expect. We see the disciplines of inventory optimization moving beyond the early adopters to the mass adopters. And make no mistake, those early adopters, using the focused nature of inventory optimization, saw that 10 to 30% reduction in buffer inventory across their multi-level supply chain while using these techniques and, and also saw our increased or maintained service levels. We see mid-market companies jumping in as well, which is another symptom of maturation. Supply chain leaders such as Kraft, P&G, Pepsi, among others, were early adopters, often reducing supply chain operating costs by over 20% by reconfiguring their product delivery networks. It took a number of years for the mid-market companies to follow the trend and optimize their networks. We see organizational acceptance and even in some cases the creation of organizational departments to focus on inventory optimization as one of the backbones of a company's supply chain planning playbook. So the conclusion is that leading companies now see that to remain competitive, they need to view inventory optimization as a business discipline, not a technology or a one-time point solution. So what are these five core competencies that we're referring to? Well, the first is multi-level inventory optimization, that multi-level nature of the problem. And the ability to understand demand and supply, the uncertainty of demand and supply, and to propagate the impact of that uncertainty up and down the bill of materials, up and down the bill of distribution, that's key. What's an example? Let's say you're sourcing products from Asia. Anybody do that? I bet you do. Maybe some key raw materials or even some finished goods. We all know that that boat from China to Los Angeles in the ERP system, it takes four weeks. That's lead time. But is that reality? Sometimes there's weather, customs, maybe even pirates. And that variability in that one key supply link could cause the remote distribution center in Saskatchewan in Canada to miss a customer's expectation. And not only that, that stockout's going to trigger a series of expedites and overordering and other bad activities that we're all too familiar with, and that's going to be the inherent cost of not understanding the variability and how it propagates up and down the supply chain and how you have to buffer for it. Now, number two on our core competencies hit list is the ability to time phase this inventory plan. And again, we all know our businesses have cycles and seasons. And we're not talking about forecasting the cycles and the seasons. We're talking about understanding how those cycles affect the uncertainty of the signals propagated across this multi-level supply chain and being able to buffer across time in accordance with the business cycle. Now, what's an example of that? Well, you have new products, right? New product introductions, demand and supply volume will vary with the life cycle, as well as the uncertainty, and maybe even the physical network may vary across the life cycle. And we see the best practices matching the inventory, the capital plan, to these new product introductions and other time-based, cycle-based business processes. Now, the third core competence we, we talk about is managing the impact of SKUs and what traditionally has been referred to hyperbolically as SKU proliferation and managing that impact on inventory. And product innovation is a good thing, and it's a lifeblood of market-leading companies. We all know this. 
The inventory optimization team, though, has a key role here. And again, we see in the best practices... They say, okay, we like the 32 color set of the makeup you're introducing, but this is the working capital we're going to have to have to support you in launching this product. And in having this ability to bring calculated numbers, real numbers, to the SKU creation and the innovation cycle is a key to making the right bets with the company's money. So that's SKU proliferation. Fourth, best practice, is looking at all the costs across the echelons in the supply chain while making outsourcing or insourcing or other sourcing decisions. And I'll give you an example. I was talking with a big chemical customer this week, and they integrate the working capital investment data from their inventory optimization into making decisions on where to locate or where to close a plant. In this example, to position more inventory in a region to support the customers of a high-cost European facility that they were thinking about closing. So to close that facility, they have to move the inventory around the network to make up for the transportation difference and the variability difference. It's a trade-off. And you and I know a lot of these types of decisions were made historically on gut feel or partial data estimates. But if you allow the inventory optimization team to come to the table, you have the facts on that working capital and investment trade-offs. And finally, our number five core competency is being able to position capital to manage to multiple classes of customer service. Look, we all know not all customers are equal and not all products are equal when it comes to service and when it comes to investing in that service. Best-in-class inventory optimization means managing a mix of service levels that realistically balances your capital investment with that revenue opportunity. What's an example? I talk to hard goods customers of mine who have big box customers. They got catalog customers, they got mom and pop customers, maybe they have web customers, they have different channels. And these all have different service requirements and different lead times and different variability, and some even have penalties associated with them. And these guys need the inventory optimization process to understand these classes and make the right recommendation as to how to deploy working capital in the extended network in the right mix to support the company's goals. I work with a number of companies that have set up processes with their retailers in exchange for more detailed sales and inventory data on consumer products that the retailers were selling, the manufacturer would use its forecasting capabilities to generate more accurate sales estimates, to do better positioning of product in the retailer's supply chain. The projects I've seen can result in substantial improvements in forecast accuracy as well as sales lift and inventory reductions for both parties. If you think about it, every time your procurement group cuts a PO, every time your MRP kicks out a replenishment order or a Kanban, you're making an investment decision for your company that's going to impact the working capital on the balance sheet and impact the top line on the income statement. So treating inventory optimization as a core competency and embracing these and other best practices will make or break your company's competitiveness in the long run. And if you want to keep up in today's landscape where folks are competing on their supply chains, you have to invite the inventory optimization gurus to the table. Well, the whole multi-echelon inventory management is, is, is really the catalyst and I think a critical part of the next generation of supply chain optimization tools that focus not only managing supply chains within companies but also with supply chain partners. All right, that's great. Well, thank you very much for your input this afternoon. Thank you, Chris. Okay, that's it for this episode of Beyond Inventory Optimization, sponsored by Legility, a leader in collaborative supply chain management solutions with over 1,250 customers worldwide and climbing. Legility's Voyager Suite provides comprehensive supply chain management from demand and transportation planning to warehouse management, from SNOP planning to inventory optimization. We hope you'll take a look at Legility's website, download some of our white papers on various supply chain topics, and see how inventory optimization can free up working capital, reduce inventory, handle uncertain demand with confidence, and raise your customer service levels while actually cutting supply chain costs. Just go to www.legility.com. And that's it for today, everyone. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time on Beyond Inventory Optimization. Optimization.